I'll be getting started in another minute. Thanks for your patience. We're letting some more people in right now. I'm so excited that you have joined us today. I'm really looking forward to starting the presentation in another minute. In the meantime, make sure that you have printed off your workbook and uh, make sure you have what you need to be comfortable, a glass of water, even some snacks, whatever, that's totally fine, a notepad. And then again, make sure that you did print off the workbook so you can refer to it, it'll just be, You'll be glad that you did, that you printed it off ahead of time. In the chat, if you could go ahead and share where you are watching our master class from, that would be great to see. So welcome. If you're just entering the master class, we'll get, be getting started in another minute. I hope to actually end early, around 45 minutes into it, the very latest but I do have a lot that I wanna cover with you in this first session. So we're just gonna to try to keep on, keep up with the pace. If you can share in the chat where you are watching today, that would be great. I am in the Chicago area. Uh, you probably can tell from my accent. And um, yeah, and it's, uh, if you wanna even share the weather that you're experiencing, where you're at right now, right now, uh, it's been kind of gray, but the sun came out today. So that's a good thing. All right, I'll be right back. Let me let a few more folks in. So I know he will not get selected. What the clients has tell us, he should be five, ten above, fair looking, very dashing look. <laughs> If you could also make sure that you are muted, that would be great. We need everyone to be muted because we want to cut down on any background noise. And again, just letting in a few more people. So print off your workbook if you haven't had the chance to do that. Get a glass of water, maybe even stretch too. I'm not sure what kind of morning you've had but go ahead and stretch, get comfortable. And we're gonna get started in another minute. I had myself on mute. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and get started. All right, happy Monday, everyone. Welcome to the Land Your Ideal Role in 90 Days Simple 2023 Career Plan Masterclass. This is my free masterclass. I was able to do it five times last year. I'm very excited to be bringing it to you right now. So this is great. I'm very happy to have you all in here. 
We do have a lot of folks. We have over 50 people that registered for it. And then I do know a lot of people will be checking out the replays. It's great that you are joining live because you're making yourself a priority. Your career is a priority. And uh, I want you to make sure that you put yourself first. I know it sounds, it sounds weird to say that out loud and it sounds kind of selfish, but it's true because if we don't put ourselves first, how can we help others? It goes back to when you are on an airplane and they always say, if you're with a child, give yourself the oxygen first and then make sure that they're okay. We have to make ourselves a priority. That is really important. And letting in a couple more people. I have this really interesting setup. I haven't done this before. I haven't presented on this webcam before. I've always done it sitting down. But I don't like to do presentations or even to talk with people sitting down. Sitting is the new smoking, and I prefer to stand. So I'm really happy to be doing this presentation to you standing. So that's a good thing. And again, I want to ask everyone to make sure if just look on your screen right now and make sure that you're muted because um, that background noise can really interfere with our presentation and we want to stay focused. And then if you're willing to share really quick, put in the chat where you're watching from today, that would be great. Okay. So who am I? I think most of you may know who I am, but if you don't, I'm just going to be super quick about it. I already mentioned that I'm in the Chicago land area. My background is from human resources. I started off though in accounting and finance, and that's what my college degree is in. And I did that for about eight years. And then I found my way to human resources. I've done at least a couple of career pivots myself, and I know that it can be done. So if you need to do a career pivot, Please do not be discouraged at all because it is possible. Many people do it and I've done it and it is possible. Um, so anyway, I've been able to use my progressive experience that I've had in human resources to help individuals, to help small businesses. And my current focus is working with individuals to help you really get in tune with what is most important to you and then what your strengths and skills are and how to really use those effectively you know, to be invaluable to others. That's my little spiel for you. I do have QR codes as well in the presentation. So feel free to access, access those QR codes. We wanna make it as easy for you as possible uh, to, to do that. So, and I'm letting in a few more folks in. So let me do that. Okay, so why do you need a career plan? I think it's, it makes, it, it's pretty simple. I mean, we need, we always need a plan if we're going on a vacation or we have a project that we're working on, whatever it may be, like put all of those in that whole big project category. Okay, for any project, we need a plan. And a career plan is up at, their, at the top of your list, or it should be near the top of your list because it impacts your life. It impacts, gosh, we spend a third of our lives at work. That's why it's critical that we have a career plan. We still have more people coming in. So that's what I'm doing here to make sure that people get in. Okay. This next quote, I love this quote. I want you to always remember this quote. Be yourself, everyone else is taken. Oscar Wilde really knew what he was talking about. Have you ever felt like you were trying to be something that you're not, or you're just trying to uh, fit in? Don't be doing that. Really tap into what makes you invaluable. How are you invaluable to others? I firmly believe that we were all given specific skills and talents that are unique to us. We, um, we just, there's no one else on the world, on this planet that is like you. No one else has your unique mix of skills and talents. And uh, you wanna make sure that you're really fully using those. Um, you, you are here for a reason. And I want to help you connect with that. 
So that's why, why I love this quote so much. Now, we did have some pre-work for you to do before today's session. If you didn't do it, it's totally fine. Please don't ever feel like you're behind or anything. You know, we all go at our pace that works for us. But I do want to address these right now. And these were in the workbook. Okay. So I want you to look at like your top five strengths. Okay. And I also, I want you to acknowledge, first of all, what got you here to this point. I want you to look at your past wins. Where have you been successful? What have you done well? And also to what have been your past challenges? What have been struggles for you? Okay. But the key thing is, this is, this is non-negotiable in my book. You have to be kind to yourself always. That is critical. You are all you have. <laughs> you, you have to be your, your advocate, your champion. If you're not, who will be? Who else will be? So we can, don't beat yourself up. Look for the lessons instead. Where is the learning? Why did those past challenges happen? What can you learn from them? And how can you take it to move forward in the direction that you want to move? But it does start with identifying those five strengths. So if you have a, you should have a piece of paper and a pen handy. If you haven't done it already, just take a minute. I want you to take a minute and jot down what your five strengths are, okay? And then here's another thing. If you are comfortable in sharing in the chat what your top strength is, like think of it as your superpower, then you want to share that in the chat. I would love to see that too. All right, so we have our five strengths. What are we going to do with them? We need to use them. How do we communicate how, how we're invaluable to others? How do we communicate why this employer should hire us? You know, you've heard of the elevator story. If someone, you know, if you're networking in a in-person function or in the elevator at the grocery store, what's your elevator pitch? It all comes down to what are your star stories? That's what how I like to frame it up is your star stories. So you take your five accomplishments and you take time to reflect on them. Think about when have you used them in your career? And you wanna frame them up specifically using the STAR acronym, okay? So, and you actually have, there's a STAR story worksheet in your workbook. So you can use that, um, you know, if you have not done the pre-work yet. STAR, what does STAR stand for? STAR stands for the strength, number one, okay? Number two is the task. So what was it that you were doing? What were you working on, you know, and using that strength, okay? And then, um, so what, what the project is or what the problem was even, because a lot of tasks are essentially problems. What was the action that you took on that? What did you do? And then the R is the result. What was the result of that? And this is, this is how we, we let our brand, our unique personal and professional brand shine through, is through our stories. Think about it. When you've met people in the past or what you remember, what are the things that we remember the most? We remember stories. I remember stories. Stories are enjoyable too. Like when you meet someone who's a great storyteller, it just makes talking with them even more enjoyable, okay? That's why story is so powerful. Think about the times you've interviewed someone and think about the people that you hired. Why did you hire them? They did a good job of communicating their experience and most likely they shared at least one or two stories with you to illustrate their experience. That's why STAR is so important. So again, the career plan is so important because a third of our lives are spent at work. Our work impacts all areas of our lives. I mean, I remember, I'm sure you've experienced too, when you're not happy at work and you bring that energy home, 
that's not really good. That's not good at all. We need to take action. We need to address it. I talk about ideal role. What is an ideal role? And um, you might think that uh, that's something that's perfect, that's hard to reach. I, I, I disagree. I think that you can have work where you're invaluable, where you feel fulfilled, that you're well compensated, that's aligned with your purpose and you are using your strengths, your unique strengths and skills and talents, your, even your personality traits to provide value to others. You are shining brightly because you're really being you in the workplace. You feel comfortable to be you in the workplace. That is key. So that's, that's how I define your ideal role. give you an overview of this week. This is what we have planned. Today is about reflection. Reflect to get clarity on your purpose, how to get clarity on your purpose, what you need to do, the important things to consider. Tomorrow, tomorrow we're going to talk about plan, the plan. What is the plan? What's the career plan? I keep on saying, I feel like I'm nagging you constantly and I'm a broken record. You have to have a plan. We'll talk about the plan finally tomorrow and identifying how to take action. So that the plan is like our blueprint for how to take action. And um, again, we, we always need to have a plan with our career, it's really important. And then the other really neat thing too, at the end of tomorrow's session, I'm going to be announcing a special bonus for participants. So um, I'm really excited about this. I haven't done a special bonus before. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, so I'll be announcing that at the end of tomorrow's session. So stay tuned for that. And day three will <clears throat> is about connect. Connect is like the main action that we take in our career plan. And that's, I think we can see it more obviously when we're in job search mode, when we're networking and we're interviewing and all that good stuff. But also too, when you're happy in your role, you don't plan on leaving it. You're thinking, okay, I'm going to be here for at least another two, three years, but I don't know what's next. I don't know what's next for me. And I, that's a huge question mark that I'd like an answer to. Connection can help you with that. It really can. It's great. You want, you want to have a plan. You want to have an idea of what the next step is. I don't expect you to know what you're going to be doing until you're 90, you know, that, but if we can at least know what the next step is, that's an important thing to do. All right, now today, so that's that was like the groundwork stuff that I wanted to, to just like lay out to you and give you an overview of what this is going to look like. I should also say, so I said, again, print out your workbooks. And then the whole the reason why we put the workbooks together for you too, not just to help with facilitating this masterclass, <clears throat> but to help you for the whole year, for all of this year with your career plan. So please use that workbook throughout the year. That's really important. Um, and then I was talking about the for our three days. Uh, we will be, so every day we're going to send out, I think like a total of four emails. So first thing in the morning around 8.30 Central Standard Time with the Zoom link and just to remind you. And then another one about an hour and a half later, again, to remind you. One right when we're going live, like two minutes as we're going live. And then the replay will be sent out in the afternoon around 3.30 Central Standard Time, okay? So, and we're sending all those emails each day because we know that you are inundated. We know you have a lot going on. We're trying to help you. I appreciate it when people follow up with me because they're helping me to do what I wanna do. And we're trying to help you to do what you want to do. We're not trying to be pests or, you know, but those emails are to help you. 
Okay. So I just wanted you to be aware of that. That's why you're seeing those. Okay. And then of course, if you have questions during any of this at all, if you don't feel comfortable, you can put them in the Facebook group. But if you're still not comfortable, you can reply to any one of those emails and just send me your question. That's fine too. That's not a problem at all. I do have my two um, assistants helping me. We have Job and we have Gerald. They are um, in here as well. So, um, you know, they, they might be able to attend to something too behind the scenes. So if you put a question in the chat, if for some reason I don't see it, they're going to grab it and they'll circle back with me to help me help you. Okay, day one, reflection. We have several voices in our head. <laughs> I, I, well, I know I do, and I don't want you to be scared. <laughs> but think about the two main voices that we have. And I think that we're all, all too familiar with the voice of the inner critic. The inner critic is that super negative voice that we hear that's like always there. Uh, I think we have, the statistics are, we have over 65,000 thoughts in a day and 90%, I think it may be even 95% of them are negative and they are on a loop. So we are constantly hearing them all the time. Are we ever going to get rid of the inner critic? No, I don't think so. We don't want to get rid of the inner critic because the inner critic is that, that one who kept us from being eaten by the dinosaur when we were cavemen. So, so it's to protect us, to keep us safe. But at the same time, we need things to be more balanced. We do need balance. On my slide here, I have the inner critic, the voice that protects you and keeps you playing safe by convincing you of failure. The worst thing is when we, when we use our imagination to worry. So when you worry and when you obsess, that's the dark side of the imagination. I remember when my coach had said that and it really stuck with me because it is true. Worry is the dark side of imagination. We need to be more balanced. We have to strike a balance. Sometimes when we worry excessively, it's like the pendulum has swung all the way far to the left. And that's really not helping us to take the action that we need to uh, really you know, move forward. So, so that's the inner critic. Now, on the other side is the inner mentor. That's the voice of intuition. Um, that's the voice that is our North Star, is our, is our beacon that we need to follow. We need to listen to that voice, the inner mentor. So that's, that's what I want you to get from today is number one, I want you to be more aware of when you hear the inner critic, when you hear the, that negative, negative voice talking to you. Okay. I don't want you to try to hush it or kick it to the curb because it's going to come back. It doesn't go away. But if you can just kind of listen to it and not let it sweep you away and not let it take over things, that's a good thing. Try to be more of a scientist. Try to be more neutral and hear it, acknowledge it, but don't let it stop you. And then tune into your inner mentor that voice of your intuition and your dreams and what you really want. I love this slide. Granted, it's not so great stuff because it's talking about the noise that we hear in our lives. So this is a diagram. This is like a stick figure diagram. And I first saw this stick figure when um, my coach was presenting uh, material from Bob Proctor. Some of you might have heard about Bob, Bob Proctor. Um, he died last year. He's quite a man. Um, but anyway, he discovered this diagram 
and he calls it the stick figure diagram. Like when you think of the mind, you close your eyes and try to think of a picture that represents the mind. I think most of us picture the human brain because when we think of the mind, we think of the human brain. But the human brain is the organ associated with it, but it's not it's not really the mind. So he discovered this, this simple diagram that represents the mind. I'm not going to go into what it means and all the different parts, but the reason I'm using it here is to show you how we're so impacted by everything, all these external factors, expectations of others and their opinions. There's been books that have been written, so many books about, don't worry about what other people think. You need to follow your own direction. And that's why, because we're so driven to do that, to make others happy. The pandemic, that had such a huge impact on us. The media and our relationships and our responsibilities and commitments, all of these things are noise that can drown out what is most important to us and what the plan is that we're supposed to follow. We can't control those outside variables. We cannot. And, but we shouldn't allow them to impact our lives, to have a huge impact on our lives and our journey to, to reaching our goals. That's the key. So again, we don't have control over anything on the outside, but we do control ourselves and we control our actions and how we want to live our lives. So like take a deep breath and think about that. So yeah, I may not have control over the outside, anything outside of me, but I do determine my, my actions, my feelings, what I'm doing. That always makes me feel good when I pause and I reflect on that. Getting back to the inner mentor. So I want you to spend some time tonight, maybe before you go to sleep, or maybe even when you're wrapping up your work day today, to think about your inner mentor. And your inner mentor is you 20 years from now. Right. So let's I'm thinking about my inner mentor. And when I reflect on my inner mentor, I think about who is she? Where does she live? What does she like to eat? What does she look like? What clothes does she wear? What things does she like to do? What does she how does she exercise? You know, and what work does she enjoy? Um, you know, what has mattered most to her in the past 20 years? What has what has been important to her. So, um, because you wanna make sure that you're going in the direction that you really want to go. And this exercise, doing this is very helpful. And what is it that you need to know now and take action on to get where you want to be in 20 years? What will help you to be true to yourself and to be your best self? So for me to be her, my best self, or for the, our guys in the audience, for you to be him, right? That's important. So this is a, a good thing to do. You could even um, do this like in a meditation, but um, it's important to think about. It really is. So I want you to pause. So if you can tonight, even just for five minutes before you go to bed, that might be the, the best time for you but to ask yourself these questions. What is the number one goal setting mistake? The number one goal setting mistake is to listen to the noise and your inner critic and to let that drown out your, your inner mentor that you're trying to hear. So because we really, we've got to tune in, we've got to work hard to really tune into what we want, what is most important to us. Um, and all of the external noise and that inner critic can really be the number one barrier. We, we are our worst enemies uh, because we impose limits on ourselves and stop ourselves from stretching outside of our comfort zone. 
Now, more about your inner mentor. Your inner mentor is the answer to your big, scary goal. It's your heart's desire. That I, the big, scary goal, this is the other thing. I want you to ask yourself, what is my big, scary goal? So remember when I was saying earlier, you know, you don't have to know exactly what you're going to be doing 20 years from now. It would be great if you thought about it and at least reflect it. But if you have problems thinking about that, what about at least identifying your next step? Okay. And it should be something that you're really stretching yourself toward. So that's, that's like the big scary goal. You know, you really want to, that goal should be something that you haven't achieved for before. It is something that is stretching you. And uh, it's not, again, it, it's something that you haven't done before. What does your inner mentor say about that goal? You know, and what can you do right now? What's one small thing that you can do now, today, in the next 24 hours, that will move you closer to that, to that goal? And yes, <laughs> with your big scary career goal or your big scary goal, I want you to have take on something that's big and scary in your career. Is it managing a larger team? Is it working at a larger company? Is it leaving corporate and starting your own business? That's what I did. That was extremely scary. And it still is at times. <laughs> uh, and I put it off for the longest time too. Um, but so think about that. That is important. And in our reflection, Think about the three W's, okay? The what, the why, and the how, right? So what is your main goal that you are working on right now? What is that? And then what the most important question to me is why? Why is it your main goal? Why is this important to you? This, the how isn't as important but if you can at least know what the next step is with the how, that's good. I think we stop ourselves when we can't picture all the steps that we have to take. And I can tell you from leaving corporate and from starting my own business, there was no way. If I had waited until I knew what all the steps were, I never would have done it. And you need to be able to you know, see the first step but then just have faith that the next steps will be revealed to you as you're going through and you're taking action. In your workbook, you have a career goal card. And I want you to use this. I really want you to use this. And I have my career goal card. Let me show you. It's on my desk. Here it is. <laughs> it's very, it's a bit warm, but I uh, carry it around with me. It, it has my, my main work goal on it, but it also has uh, important personal goals to a couple of personal goals. But for you, since we're focused on your career here, I want you to think about what is that big, scary career goal for you. And I want you to write it down on a piece of paper. So again, um, I want you to think about what that big scary career goal is for you. And I want you to write it down on an index card or this, I mean, that's why we created this. And you're not just writing it down on, on this index card and then filing it somewhere. No, you carry it around with you. You look at it throughout your day. You look at it when you wake up in the morning. You you know, that's really important that you are looking at it throughout the day because it's going to keep you tethered to your goal. It's like, we need that. We get bombarded by so many things. Once we jump into our day, it's like you're on an obstacle course and you're doing all these things. But when you pause periodically and you look at your goal, then you're like, ah, yeah, I'm working on this. I need to 
take this action. So again, it, it's, it's like a compass. It helps to keep you on the path that you need to follow. It's a very simple thing, but it's also really powerful. All right, let me move my next slide here for you. We also have these QR codes for resources to help you with reflection. I hear this all the time. I hear, and I, I've experienced this myself too, how hard meditation is. Meditation can be really, really challenging. I, I know I have monkey mind. I definitely have monkey mind. Meditation will help you so much. So do not give up on it. And you can, there's things that are like meditation. Like what I've been doing now is breath work. And breath work, the way I would describe it is it's more, it's more structured. I need that structure because otherwise, if I try to do a free form meditation, it's not going to be very effective for me. Breath work is very structured and I'm very focused on my breathing. When we focus on our breathing, it really helps us to be centered and to concentrate. So even if you've tried to meditate, if you've had a really hard time with it and you're still not doing it, do something really simple and maybe at the top of every hour, just pause for a minute and take a deep breath from your diagram a deep breath in and a deep breath out. And then go do your work for the next hour. And then the next hour, try to do it. You know, And don't beat yourself up if you forget if like a couple hours go by. But that's a good way of taking a break for yourself, pausing. And when people, if you're having a crazy day, you're not able to take a break, but even if you could just close your eyes, pause for a minute and just deeply breathe in and deeply breathe out. You're helping yourself so much. So do that. And then these are apps, apps on your iPhone, or if you have an, a different phone, use these apps to help you. So there's a great meditation video um, that is on YouTube. It's only about 10 minutes long, but it's a guided meditation it really makes meditation so much easier. There's also um, this five minute journal. It's great because it's a daily gratitude and mood tracker. And you can even like put pictures in there. I use this, I use this every day. Uh, you can put pictures in there from your day. You could even save little videos. It's really nice. I like it a lot. So, and it's fun to look back to on it. So you may want to try that. And then affirmations. I have that in here. And you know, I, I've, I've done it too, thinking, oh, affirmations, those are so corny. Why would I need those? But then I did start using them. They are a great tool to combat the, uh, the inner critic, that negative voice that we hear. They really do help a lot. So I would encourage you to give it a try. I don't expect you to start doing all these things right away. In fact, I don't want you to do that because that's not setting you up for success. Think about the one thing. What's the one thing that you think would help you the most? Like you could even do like, like what are the three or four things to, from today that you like and just prioritize them and just start with one thing because that way you'll be setting yourself up for success and you just have that one thing to focus on. So that would be my advice to you. I will get you the, a good app to use on your phone for breath work is the Mastery app and it's spelled M-A-S-T-R-Y. Uh, we will We'll get you, we can add that to our resource document that we'll be sharing with you. We're, I have a huge resource document that um, you know, we'll be sharing with you um, before the end of this masterclass. But I wanted you to see all of these QR codes. All right, so today, again, we did the, we talked about reflection. We set the foundation 
um, because that is a reflect. I mean, it is the foundation. It is the the first key in my my one on one coaching program, and um, and it's the first thing that I talk about in this master class. And we need reflection. We need to build in time for reflection in our day. So another thing that you can do if you feel like you're run over by your work day or just run over by the day in general. Try to get in the habit of planning. So when you wrap up your work day today, try to start planning for tomorrow. And when you're planning for tomorrow, you know, think about what what you did well today. What what were your wins? What did you, so what do you want to celebrate? What were your wins? Um, is there anything that you wished you had done that you didn't do? So start, stop, and continue. That's a, a simple way of thinking about it. Start, stop, and continue. So what do you need to start doing? What should you stop doing? And what do you need to continue doing? So the wins, I would say, the wins, you definitely want to continue with the wins. And, um, you know, just really reflect on the day and what did you do well? What did you not do so well on? And what are the lessons learned from that? And then definitely incorporate gratitude in there too. And, um, you know, even I would love it if you would track as part of your daily planning. So, you know, wrapping up this day and planning for tomorrow, even if you had an accomplishment journal and you just added something to it. If you could just add one thing a day to that accomplishment journal, that would help you when it comes time to update your resume and update your LinkedIn profile and do all those good stuff, good, those good things. When you need to ask for a raise, you have all of those things. So that's, um, that's another way to approach it for the reflection piece. But think about today, when is going to be the best time for you to reflect? When you're wrapping up your workday, maybe you do that and right before you go to sleep too, to reflect. But anyway, tomorrow, I'm so excited for tomorrow because we will be um, beginning, well, well, we'll be putting together our plan, um, which is our action plan. So how are we going to take action uh, in, our, in our career, to be going in the direction that we want to, to achieve what we want to. How are we going to be doing that? So um, I'm really excited about that, to be going over that with you. Um, before we wrap up, Jarrell and Jab, were there any questions that we needed to attend to? I didn't know if there were any questions in the Facebook group. We are, I don't think I mentioned that, we're streaming in the Facebook group too, as well as Zoom. And any uh, no questions? No questions? There's no question. Okay, yeah. excellent. Thank you so much, Jarrell. And then thank, thank you, you, everyone, for being here. And then make it super easy. We'll be back here tomorrow at the same time, the same Zoom link. And uh, yeah, send us your questions if you have any questions. I can't wait. So again, tomorrow is putting together your career plan and also before the end, near the end of tomorrow, I'm going to be announcing a special bonus for you. So I'm really excited about that. All right, everyone, have a great day and uh, we'll see you tomorrow.